Welcome back to Instruments of Destruction, the game where you can build the destructive instrument of your dreams. And uh, today I want to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to try to replicate something that is not meant for destruction, but could be repurposed for destruction. And that is something known as the spin launch. Now the name might be a little bit confusing, but uh, it's actually something where you spin something really, really fast and then you launch it. Now in reality, this thing is actually meant to uh, aid with getting things into space while using less fuel, because normally when you try to get something into space, you actually have to use fuel to get off the ground and burn a lot of it overcoming gravity. Now, in concept, the spin launch is very simple. You spin and then you launch. The real mechanism is uh, a lot more complicated than that because you're dealing with a vacuum that you're trying to keep sealed while launching a thing out of it. Fortunately, in Instruments of Destruction, we're not going to be worrying about the complicated vacuum part. I just need to worry about the release timing and seeing if I can actually get something to spin something really fast but be able to release it at the same precise moment so we can accurately launch it either straight up and then hopefully straight out of building once we uh, get the initial design down. Okay, so the process of building this thing is gonna be a lot of trial and error, probably more error than anything else, um, but I think a good way to start is to have a base that is going to use attachment blocks to attach itself firmly to the ground. That doesn't look very uh, secure, does it? Now, to get this thing to spin extremely fast, uh, there's a lot of options that we have. I am looking at the power swivel. The fast swivel, uh, uh, let's try the fast swivel first. I mean, it has the word fast in it. That, that can't be a bad thing, right? Now, the only downside to the fast swivel is it just doesn't have as much power as a power swivel. It just, it's capable of higher speeds, but if our payload that we're launching is particularly heavy, it might not ever be able to reach that speed if it doesn't have the actual power. So now I'm building the spinning arm here, and the other question is, what is the payload going to be? What are we going to actually be launching? Now, I'm going to think ahead in terms of, um, I want this to actually eventually be an instrument of destruction, so I'd like for us to launch something destructive. Oh, well, there's an obvious answer to that, isn't there? A bomb. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be one of the key pieces right here the release connector to which our bomb is going to be connected. All right, so here's the bomb. So in order to make this thing stable as it rotates, we have to have a counterweight that pretty much exactly counters the weight of this, hence the name counterweight. Now, I don't actually know how heavy all of this stuff is. I could try to add it all up individually, but unfortunately, it would be really nice if, uh, if I select a bunch of parts. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. What I was saying, as it would be really nice if I just select a bunch of parts, if it actually gave me the mass of my selection, because then I could see exactly how much weight was on this side, and I could know exactly how much to add to this side. I guess some trial and error is, is gonna be probably the easier way to do it. All right, I'm just gonna go with this as the counterweight for now. No idea if it's gonna be adequate or not. Let's see what happens if we just spin this up. Oh, you know what? Here's an excellent way to find out how the weight is. If I put it horizontal like this, and then I release, all right, we can clearly see one side is heavier, but you know what? <laughs> Knowing that, let's just test this out, see how fast we can get it to spin up. Here we go. All right, I'm not very impressed with this at all. But you know what? Let's see manual releasing here, manual timing. Eventually, I'm going to have to program the timing to be consistent, if that's even possible. But let's see if I can get this thing to release straight up. In three, two, one, release. That is not straight, and <laughs> the bomb was also set to explode with the release button. Okay, bomb, you are not allowed to be attached to any controls. Let's delete those. All right, now I kind of want to try again just to see uh, what it's like to release the bomb itself. I'll do better this time. All right, three, two, one. Oh, why? Did you see it spin? That's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to... Where'd it go? Where... Oh, oh, there it is. Uh... I think it, I don't know where it landed. I missed it. There it is. But that is so bad that it spins when it releases. It should just go straight when it releases. Like it is in the straight trajectory. Okay, this is a problem. This game is not following the right physics. Like, is there a problem with, I, it, sh it really shouldn't. See, like when it releases, 
it spins and it really shouldn't spin because at the moment of releasing, it is just going in one direction and it should just keep going in that direction straight. Unless, is it because the weight on this has to be equal on either side? Like it has to release from the exact center? Hmm. All right, let me do an experiment here. All right, I've gotten this to 25,000 kilograms exactly, which means it's going to be very easy for me to figure out the weight of things because it says this bomb is 1,200 kilograms, but that's the big bomb. So you can see that goes to 1,200, but if I make it small like this, it goes to 25,400. So this is only 400 kilograms, which means I need to add 400 kilograms to the back of this. Oh, perfect. So this is uh, 100. That's 200, 300, 400 kilograms. Oh wait, but this is not the same distance. No, 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 that's not gonna work. It needs to be the same distance from the center point here. I need, to, is there anything that is exactly 400 kilograms? 350, 450, oh, you gotta be kidding me, 250. Oh, here we go. Heavy beam, this is 400 kilograms. All right, this doesn't look pretty, but let's just see if it has the same spin effect. All right, air, we go. Oh, why is the bomb doing that? Oh boy. Well, that didn't work. Ah, it is not working. Hmm. <laughs> I have idea. <sighs> this is a good idea. Okay. All right. I got to take this whole thing and then I'm going to rotate it sideways like this. So this is going to be the launch, the designated launch zone. I need it to launch from here. So then what I can do is attach a gyroscope just like this. It is going to retain its initial direction and the gyroscope is going to activate as soon as this releases, which will then lock it to this direction of travel. At least that's the plan. All right, let's see if that works as intended. Three, two, one, launch. Oh, okay, well, it's gone, but it looked better. <laughs> Let me try launching it slowlier. Launch. Okay, see, that's more of along the lines of what I was expecting. Probably wouldn't hurt to put the strength of the thing all the way up. All right, that's, it's looking much better. It is looking much better. Let me add some more weight to this then, see if we can balance this thing out. How's that look? Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Yeah. No. I think I need to move everything up just a little bit. I don't know if you guys noticed, the bomb is doing a really weird thing. The faster it rotates, the more the bomb removes itself from the correct attachment point. It's a little strange, but uh, that's just what we're dealing with. All right. Uh, look up a little bit. Three, two, one, launch. Oh, that looked good. That looked pretty good. There it comes. Oh, that's a problem. We got another problem, kind of. I don't know. I guess, <laughs> what are you doing? Look at it. It's like dancing on the ground. Look at it go. All right, but the problem that I was thinking is um, because of this gyro now, it doesn't actually come back down like you would expect a missile to, but it's not really supposed to. When you think about the original uh, spin launch purpose, it's really supposed to get to a final destination, which is not where, back where it came from. So perhaps... Once we weaponize this thing by turning it horizontal, that's just not going to be an issue because the bomb's just going to go straight to its target. But my challenge right now is to uh, try to get this thing to spin faster, first of all, because that's kind of not that impressive, and get it to release perfectly straight up or in the direction that it's allegedly aiming. <laughs> okay, so this is how fast it spins with the current setup. It is a max overdrive fast swivel. Now, if we swap out this fast swivel and replace it with a power swivel, also on max power, with unlimited torque. Let's see if that feels any faster. Here we go. Okay, that is already incredibly faster. So fast that the bomb is just not even part of our, our creation anymore. <laughs> well, there it goes. Okay, so now that begs the question. If I take this fast swivel and I stack another fast swivel that is also max overdriven, is this going to be stable? All right, it's looking okay so far. Is it going to be faster? Let's find out. Whoa, what's, well, hold on, what's going on here? Oh, that looks uncomfortable. That, I mean, they're supposed to, they're supposed to feed into each other. It's not looking good though. That really does not look good. Maybe I should add some distance between the swivels. Sometimes this game doesn't like it when you have uh, moving parts on top of moving parts. Creating a little bit of distance between them can, all, can often be the difference between wobbly and stable. All right, let's see if that feels better. It's not consistent, and I feel like consistency is important. 
with the spin launch. All right, well, I have another option, and that option is to actually use a free swivel and then power the entire spinning mechanism with thrusters, which literally defeats the entire purpose of the spin launch, because now we're actually going to be using rockets to spin up the spin launch. But this is only because we're dealing with the strange game limitations, okay? All right, here we go. Okay. It's not as fast as I expected it to be. Is this faster than the power swivel? I don't actually know. Oh, well, it does spin faster like this. Okay, I think it's just a matter of adding more. All right, I have um, doubled the power, I believe. Let's see how this spins now. Okay, is that better? It's really hard to tell if that's better. It looks pretty, kind of like a nice uh, sparky flower or something. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah. I need to get a better uh, camera angle when I do these. Out of curiosity, what happens when I put a seat up here? Does it give me a speed? Yeah, it's trying to. Oh. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm in a music video or something. All right, out of additional curiosity, what if I attach it to the projectile? Here we go and launch. Whoa, interesting. So the camera tries to keep both seats inside of the uh, of the camera. All right, but that's kind of stupid. I don't like that. All right, well now, I mean, I think I have it spinning about as fast as it's gonna go. And honestly, if I spin it much faster, this bomb's just gonna be completely separated and end up hitting the ground. So now I wanna see if I can get the release mechanism to trigger at a precise moment. This sensor is going to detect when this passes in front of it, and then it should give an output of one, and then this release connector will have an input of one. So no, oh. no, this release connector is gonna have an input of three because I want it to only release once I'm ready for it to release. Right now, it's just gonna automatically release after just a single, when I spawn it in pretty much, it'll release. So I don't want that to happen. I only want it to release when I'm also pressing the release button. So if I go to logic gates, the output of this logic gate will be three, which, which is what's going to trigger this release connector. But I only want it to work when it receives an input from one, which is the sensor and an input from uh, E, which is the, my launch control. So if I switch this to an AND gate, once those things are active, it should then activate the output, which will then trigger the release connector. So let me see if that actually works as intended. So I should be able to spin up. And yes, if you look really, really closely, you can see this blinking inconsistently, which is not good. Wait, does it detect? No, it doesn't detect the other side, does it? Does it detect the other side? I don't think so. I hope not. It might actually be detecting the other side sometimes. I might need to change that. All right, well, anyway, when I press E, it should release at a, at a specific angle. Okay, there we go. So that angle is slightly too late. And by the looks of it, I actually need to make this entire side a little bit shorter so it's not gonna interfere with that sensor. So if this sensor is triggering slightly too late, that's perfectly fine. All I gotta do is move it down. Oh, I'm gonna move it down that much and just see what happens. All right, here we go. Where is the release point for this? Three, two, one. All right, that's straighter, but it still goes a little bit too much to the to the side. So this is going to be the trial and error thing. So I'm just gonna move it down by one more block and see where it goes now. And launch, okay. Let me try that one more time. You see, uh, for consistency's sake, is that gonna be the same side? Here we go. Okay, that looks pretty consistent. This is looking promising for consistency. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning to get it to actually release perfectly straight up. So now if I go right in between those two, how's this looking? And launch. Ooh, I need to go down a little bit more. All right, I don't like how much it's rocking right now. I'm definitely gonna have to make some more adjustments to the weight, but let's just see if this looks like it's launching straighter. Here we go. Okay, this is, it's its getting tough. I keep going back and forth and I keep overcompensating. So maybe smaller little adjustments. All right, good news is I've balanced it now. So it should be much less, it should be much less wobbly. All right, it still wobbles. I don't know why it still wobbles. Probably because of the bomb falling off the end there. But let's see how this launch looks. Three, two. Whoa, that looked good. That actually looked really good. All right, I need to change my camera angle. Uh, I need to change my camera angle. Uh, <laughs> None of these camera angles. There we go, free cam. And now I can just look up like this from the water. 
Yeah, this is gonna be better. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Uh oh, I don't like that. That seemed different than the last launch. Is this going to be inconsistent? That looked okay. It's going to the left now, which means it needs to launch slightly later. So I'm going to do a very slight adjustment just like that. Wait, something weird's happening. It spins on its own in the other direction. Why does it do that? Okay, hold on, stop. When it's not do- How is there an actual counter force? Like, where's that coming from? Like, it doesn't make any sense. If this- It should- what? It's a free bearing. Whichever side is heavier should just be lower. There shouldn't be power going into this system at all. This is not a powered bearing. That's not how any of this works. Why do you do this to me, game? I'm just trying to make something very dependent on physics, and you're violating all the laws of physics. All right, well, let's just see what happens now. And... That was the best one yet. I really, I really think that was the best one yet. Look, there it is. How far away, though, from the uh, starting area is it gonna land? Oh, look at that. That is pretty good. Now the question is, what? Now it's rotating that way? Did you see that? This creation is getting weird. The more I try to adjust it, the worse side effects I'm getting. But I'm, I don't know, I'm just gonna keep trying. Let's see if this one releases in a similar manner. All right, that actually looks pretty good. Let's see where it lands, though. All right, that was slightly worse, but not far off, which is the good thing. All right, move it slightly up again. Micro adjustments, that's the stage we're at here. All right, now for some reason, the free energy that is getting input into this is in the opposite direction now. I didn't change anything about this other than I moved the sensor by like a quarter of a block. So explain that one, Newton. All right, well, let's see what happens. Three, two, one, okay. It's still slightly to the left. All right, that also looks slightly worse. This is worrying me. Okay, this makes no sense. This makes absolutely no sense. So this time it went way over to the right and all I did was I moved it to a certain position and then I moved it back. And now the results have completely changed. So my only conclusion is I'm going insane because I've just, I've uh, tried the same exact experiment and I've gotten different results. Okay, that time I went, like, that was the most perfect one yet. I gotta see where this one lands. This just might be the amount of variability that we have. I, I might not be able to get more precise than this. Look at that. That was by far the best one, and I didn't change anything this time. So, we just might, it might be moving so fast that this sensor, the reaction time of this sensor, I just don't think it is that precise. All right, I think the version that I have right now is probably, that's pretty good. That's probably the best version I have. So I think there's potential, if I flip this turning mechanism sideways now, I could fling this into a building. All right, and here it is. But now there is an additional functionality that this thing needs, and that is I need to be able to aim it. So if I attach this now to a power swivel, and then I have an aiming laser, I should be able to activate the aiming laser, and that should show me where the missile is designated, what direction the missile is designated to go. Oh no, why is the... Oh, the free swivel is so bad now. Oh, oh, hold on. This is terrible. I accidentally put the power swivel in the wrong location. So let me move that out. That needs to go right in there. So now you can see I can aim this side to side. And I know it looks weird, like the, the spin launch isn't following along, but the sensor is moving with this. So that sensor will change the launch point of the spin launch. So let me aim for this building right here. And let's see how accurate this is. Here we go. Spinning up. This actually looks much more stable now. And launch. Was that accurate or what? That was right where the laser was pointing. We gotta do this in slow motion. Seeing this thing launch in slow motion is going to be interesting. Wait, why did it just do that? Okay, that was a little bit weird. All right, now let's aim for this building over here. I'm gonna slow time way down now. There we go. Oh, this even, this looks like it might even be more stable. Wait, wait, what? Why is it going backwards? I have the thrust activated. This doesn't make any sense. It's going backwards. Hold on, let me put the power back up. Or not the power, the speed. I am so confused right now. When I turn the speed down, it for some reason stops and goes backwards. That makes no sense. All right, well, let me find the speed that it works going forwards. All right, there we go. 
half speed down to a quarter speed. I don't even know what, like, I don't even know how fast it's going anymore because of the time, the time change. All right, well, let's just see what happens. Here we go, launching at 40% speed in three, two, one, launch activated. All right, the, uh, the time warping dramatically changes the physics of this, apparently. You know why? It's probably giving the sensor way more time to respond. So the sensor actually triggers way sooner because it's just, it just has that time now, which also kind of explains a little bit of the inconsistency of it. So that is a little unfortunate. We can't really do a super slow-mo. Oh my God, why? This is way, this is way more wobbly than before. Why are you so wobbly? There we go, that's a little bit better, but not too much better. I'm gonna aim for that building again, normal speed. In three, two, one. Okay, well, we did really good on the first launch. All right, let's try this building. Here we go. Three, two, one. See, okay, that time, oh, I forgot the dummies are on top of the building. That time it worked okay. I really don't know what to think about this anymore though. I was pretty excited after the first launch, but these later launches, they're not, they're not making me as excited anymore. I mean, we're still kind of hitting the targets, not as precisely as I would like. I just think it's game limitations of uh, how precise detection can be at high speeds like this. I mean, it just goes to show like, imagine real life consequences to this. Like with the actual spin launch, they're spinning like many, many, many magnitudes faster than what I'm showing right here. And they are releasing at such a minuscule, like precision angle in order to avoid catastrophic failure, like absolute catastrophic failure, because they also contained the entire thing inside of a vacuum. Am I painting the picture here on how ridiculous it is that something like this exists in real life and it's like, it works? <laughs> that building is so precise for some reason. Like when it, whenever I go for that building, it seems to go right where the laser goes. Now, why can't I be that accurate for like that building over there? All right, I'm gonna reinforce this and I'm gonna try turning the strength up a little bit. That'll technically turn the speed up, making me less precise in my um, aiming. But I'm wondering if that affects its stability at all. So now, oh my goodness. Well, there we go, we're aimed. No, it still wobbles. I was hoping to get rid of the wobble, but I guess not. Oh, look at that. That was so accurate. All right, well, this was my uh, somewhat pathetic attempt. Hey, that actually, that was another really accurate one. Somewhat pathetic attempt at recreating the, the concept of the spin launch, where you spin something and launch it at a very particular angle. I mean, it doesn't look nearly as cool as the actual thing. I didn't even know where to begin with building a circular enclosed chamber and it is not nearly as precise and it is not nearly as fast in other words this is like the cheapest knockoff version of a spin launch <laughs> you can imagine it's just full of problems but hey the past three launches have actually gone exactly where I wanted them to. So there is that. So yeah, I don't intend to give anybody any bad ideas, but um, it looks like if you turn the spin launch horizontal, it becomes a, a pretty deadly weapon or more appropriately, an instrument of destruction. All right, well, if you guys have any ideas for um, non-destructive things that could be potentially converted into instruments of destruction, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.